one. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm very glad to be here to talk with you about augmented reality on a web. I'm going to talk about web XR and explain what is XR. And uh, we will try to extend your mobile browser reality to show you what you can, you can do more. I will tell you a little bit of my story. I will, I will show you some examples, use cases, and cool demos. <clears throat> my name is Anastasia Miroshnichenko. I come from, from Berlin, but <coughs> originally I'm from Ukraine, Kiev, and uh, I'm an expert WebXR developer at St. Elmo's Berlin. And St. Elmo's Berlin is an advertisement at agency consisting of 200 professionals in different areas like design, motion design, creatives, social media, and everything. And we are responsible for ex experiential con co content and br brand storytelling. And con Connecting it all together, we are providing multi-reality solutions for our clients. But let, let me tell you my story. I started work at St. Elmo's in 2015 as a front-end de developer. And at that time, I was developing like regular web pages, websites, banners, emails, and all of this boring stuff. <laughs> but then, one day, oi, my CTO, Kevin, came to me and said that, let's try to do something else. Let's uh, see what we can create with augmented reality. At that point, we already had some experience developing for a HoloLens and uh, application-based augmented reality for iPhone and, and, and Androids, but as be a web developer by myself, I would be responsible for augmented reality on a web. So I start doing the research and uh, it was hard <laughs> because at that point there were not really a lot of information about that. So what is XR? XR means an extended reality. Okay, oh, sound, sorry. Yeah, first when you he her hear about augmented reality, you might think that it's something like that. Okay, but uh, remember this scene from the Star Wars in 1999? Uh, the, the Hollywood show us like it will be in far, far away future and uh, basically not. It happens today. The immersive technology already are, change, are changing the way we are com communicate, like using the holoportation, uh, holo driving, holo features, we can do whatever. And everything that we have for today in augmented reality, you already know, like a 360 video is when you are sitting in a headset and on the motion chair rolling around. Uh, virtual reality is for absolutely isolating the natural reality around you and you are like uh, teleported into a virtual world. Augmented reality is using for overlaying the real world with some sort of, of virtual elements. And mixed reality, it's when you can manipulate with your augmented reality from the real side. Like for example, lightning estimations, when someone switches the lights off, your uh, ob ob object can be scared or can like, do some funny animations. And all of this together means XR, extended reality. But still, the key technology for extended reality is uh, augmented 
reality. And here we can separate it into a few categories like a native augmented reality applications, web augmented reality and social, and social media AR platforms. For the native application, you might already know that we have AR Kit for iOS and AR Core for an Android. But for web, we have only HTML, JavaScript, and WebGL. So here are some examples of web-based augmented reality. On the first video, you can see a card I brought it with. So after you can, you can take and try by, by yourself, here is a QR code. You just scan it and get some aug augmentation on top of it. And these are some of our use cases we, we provided for our clients. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> on the same side with HTML and JavaScript, we, we have AR Quick Look solution for iOS and uh, Scene Viewer for uh, Android. I will talk about that more a bit later. And on social media platforms, we all know the Facebook and Instagram face fi 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 uh, filters. Uh, they are using Spark Studio and it helps you to create some augmented reality just inside of your Facebook application, which is useful if you are using the Facebook. So, also the new trending thing become is a Google ad. Uh, with Swirl and Poly technology, uh, they're developing like different um, advertising using a 3D ob objects, just building inside of your web page. And the YouTube uh, try on features. This is a 3D models. You can manipulate with them, you can transform them, you can extend them, whatever. And with the Facebook try-on features, you can try on, for example, a makeup. Because a makeup is a thing which is really hard to buy, because uh, you do not buy really a product. You are buying the results that the product <laughs> provides you. That's why it's always better to try on first. Yes, or for example, if you want to buy some sneakers, <laughs> it's a very funny application. If you ever experience <laughs> that, I would definitely re recommend. It also works with the hands. You can wear a shoes on, on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but here, uh, using a headset, we are facing with, with the problems that not Everyone can buy an expensive headset, like for example, HoloLens 2 is cost 3.5K. It's incredible. And uh, not everyone will download an application because you still need to get your phone, go to the App Store or Google Play and download an application, install it just to see some few virtual animations overlaying your real environment. No one will do that. Or they will do and then uninstall it pretty soon. That's why the WebXR comes for the rescue. And uh, how many people holding phones today? Everyone. <laughs> okay, this is a key for the future of aug augmented reality on the web.
yes, as I said, everything happening just inside of your browser. So let's take a look from where to start and how to do that because we are all developers here, right? And first I want to say that web augmented reality is just absolutely the same web page as a regular website. It's also used in HTML, a JavaScript, and some styles for the user in interface. And the basics of augmented reality is uh, web graphics. And under the hood, it's written with a WebGL, web graphic lab library. And the primitive of the graphics card is a triangle. So basically, everything in, uh, in your web environment is building with a small triangles. Let's take a look how to create it with the code. First, in HTML, just a, a regular index file, you create a canvas element. Then, using the JavaScript, you get the canvas and get the context of it. And then things become pretty complicated. <laughs> if you don't mind, I will not de des describe it step by step, but you, you, you can make a screenshot. <laughs> Uh, we cannot develop it in this way, and that's why it, it was a uh, powerful initiative to create a, such a great li libraries like a FreeGS, A-Frame, Play Canvas, BabylonJS, and many others. I will not going to talk about FreeGS. I guess my colleague Sonia will do that later on, on Spanish. Uh, but I will st st stop on an A-Frame. So, A-Frame is an open source li library created for developing virtual reality on a web. Uh, it uses an ent entity component system as HTML and it's really easy to develop. I will show you how to create the basic red spinning cube demo, it's my favorite one. <laughs> Okay, so first what we need to do is go to the A-Frame web page, uh, go to the documentation and get a CDN link. Also, if you prefer to develop with React, Angular, Vue.js, you can find an MPN model as well. So, as I said, our basic index HTML file, we just add a script tag into the head. Then we need to add a a scene tag which will rep represent our scene and all the code for a canvas will be written inside. Inside of our scene we are placing a box tag. Uh, it will create us a box geometry and we just set up the attribute to be color of red. And position of 0, 1.6 and mi minus 3. You might ask why such a weird numbers. Okay, zero for x is it's fine. But if we will not define a, a position in, in this way, our cube will be just laying on the floor and you will be not able to see nothing. As I said before, A-Frame is a framework to, to develop a virtual reality. That's why they position the camera on the, hay, on the height of a human eye. It's something like 1.6 meters from floor. That's, that's why to be able to see at least something, we need to move our box higher. And just because the camera is positioned on, on a zero by Z, we need to move our box out a bit. And just after, you will be able to see it. It's a very common issue, like, and you can spend days <laughs> solving it. Okay, uh, now let's add a bit of rotation just to see that our box is a 3D element. And let's add some animation property just to make it more attractive and live. So here we are defining the properties that we want to animate. In our case, it's rotation. And we set up an endpoint to be 405 and 45. We are looping it and set a dura duration in milliseconds. And this is it. Just how much? 10 lines of code? Come on, every one of you can, can do that, right? 
but let's try to make something more useful. And uh, like, uh, yes, what's next? Finally, we are all here to talk about the augmented reality, right? So let's add the augmented reality into that. First, we need to define which, one, which of technologies we are planning to use. We have a marker-based augmented reality, we and we have a markerless augmented reality. To develop a marker-based augmented reality, the ARGS library will help. It's also an open source library. You can find it on a GitHub. It's written by Jerome Etienne, and it's used a markers like a zero point. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the default marker is a hero marker. Markers are some sort of simplified QR codes. And with our camera on the phones, uh, it's just scan it and understand that, that this is a zero point of our scene and, and placing an object on top of it. For different markers, we, we can create a different scenes. And we can also customize it. Like, for example, instead of, of hero, we can place inside a QR code to your web page. And then it will be more practical. So, to do that, first we need to add a CDN link into head element. Into our scene tag, we add ARGS ad attribute to call our script. And uh, we add embedded ad attribute to remove a full screen can canvas tiles. Then we set up a marker and say it to be a, a hero. And that's all. The ARGS script will do er everything on its own. We don't need to do nothing more. So, as I said, every one of you can do that. <laughs> okay, I guess you want to see more, right? <laughs> now let's add, for example, a 3D model on, on a marker. For that, I will use an, an A-frame extension. It will help me to load such a models like FBX model, GLB, GLTF, object m models with materials. Mm, and I guess it's all, yeah. Also, uh, this extension will help me with an animations. And if I need some more advanced fe features of A-frames that are not included in, in a basic pack package. So. To do so, first I need to load the model into the assets. It means I want to preload a model as soon as my page gets loaded. Because sometimes models can take at least like five meg megabytes. And uh, if you will set it to be loaded at the same time when the camera gets a marker, you will get an issue with, with a loading. That, that's why we preload our, our model before. And then inside of our marker tag, we add an entity and saying to be a GLTF model. We are looking for a model. And we need to scale it. Because mostly of uh, programs like Maya, Cinema 4D, Blender, Unity will give us a huge model which is like basically it's small for a headset and it's regular for application based AR, but in web AR it's just like huge. And it also hap happens always when you are, are loading your model and you just cannot see it because it's such a big that you are, are, are actually staying inside of this model. That's why you, you cannot see it. That's why you like 99% of times need to scale, scale it down. And we call an animation mixer to bring our model to life. And this is it. I guess you have already seen it in my Twitter. If you are subscribed, subscribe, put like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
this is also one of the examples we developed for our clients, Panalpina, to take a part on, on the trade exhibition. It uses marker-based marker application, as you see, and it has a QR code to a web page inside. Works pretty stable. Also, you can add some user interface layout on top of it if you want to have some interactions. And as I said, it's absolutely happening on your browser. But what if we don't want to have this buckly fat borders on our beautiful designed flyers? Designers would say like, oh, I would not do, do that. Then there is a, a solution. A solution would be uh, image targets. It's This is how it works, yes. It uses an images. Uh, camera gets a, a grayscale of them, and then it recognizes it, and then it puts a virtual layer on top of it. And to create that, we have an AIDS wall. AIDS wall, it's very powerful JavaScript li a library cr created with, by the talented guys in Palo Alto, California. And uh, they are using this, their own SLAM en engines, simultaneous localization and mapping. They are using six degrees of world tracking, uh, heat test, trying to use a light as, as estimation. And it's pretty much more stable than ARGS. With this a library, you, you can create an image tar target examples or, for example, a surface recognition. That, 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 that means that you will be able to place an object just right on top you click on a table or onto the floor. Yeah, and to get started, you need, need to go to the AIDSWALL website, register there, and you will get a test link for developing on your local machine. But if you want to push it into production, you, will, you would be need to buy a license. So it's not open source and free, unfortunately. But what are the other cases? And here I want to introduce you Apple quick look and a model viewer from Google. Those uh, libraries are built inside of a Safari and a Chrome browser. And it uses a whole stuff in your mobile phone to deliver you the best quality augmented re re reality than it, it could happen. I will ask you to remember this science because you can find them, for example, Apple on, on the apple.com, and you can see in real life, for example, the new iPhone or Apple Watch. And uh, in, in, in a model viewer, you can Google, for example, a penguin in Google Chrome, and I'm sure that some of you will have this under, and then you will be able to place a penguin in your real environment and make a selfie. <laughs> So this is a few examples how it works. Hmm. As I said, it's pretty stable. And uh, for example, a Apple Quick Look with uh, ARKit 3, it's already using a people occlusion te technology, light estimation, and uh, you can add a lot of animation and even to have some in interactions with every d object. Uh, with Web Viewer, um, it's also working the same way, but it's better because it's cross brow browser. But for uh, viewing it on uh, Safari, you still need to up upload the USDZ file. To get USDZ file, you need to convert your object file in in the Xcode, and then it will be get into this into this some kind of zip files. 
Yeah, so d delivering augmented reality on the web, it makes it more user friendly. And that means that you do not need to download no applications. You just need to scan a QR code and open a link inside of your browser. It means that that can do every one of you uh, on the phones, not older, at least than five years. And yeah, for Android, I would recommend to use a Google Lens to scan a QR code because, uh, for example, uh, Samsung S9 have QR code reader built inside of a camera app, like on, on Apple, but I guess the others do not have it and you need, need to use an external app application for that. Google Lens will help you. And it's absolutely frictionless. You invite your customer to augmented reality just in a few clicks. And it gets in a second if you have good in internet connection. And it's really wide scope of usage. You can use it in the advertisements as I shown, or for example, in the museums, if you want to extend your exhibitions with some more information, like for example, video, 3D objects or animations brings the stature for life, for example. Or you can uh, just hover your phone onto the paintings and see how it was, was created step by step. Or you can invite Elvis Presley to play you a holographic con <laughs> concert in, in your room. Or Princess Leia, who knows. And uh, you are free to create, just make the invisible visible. <laughs> I really love this video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you a lot for your attention. Feeling dunk. If you will be ever in a Berlin, I will will be glad to meet you. And uh, I'm inviting you to have some live demo. You can scan a QR code. You will get a website. Uh, for some demos, you would need to use a hero marker. Here it is. Just hover on, t on top of it. And uh, for the AIDS wall link, you would be invited to tap on a table or on a floor to place a, plant a trees. You can create your own rainforest. And there are also examples with a quick look and a, mod, a model viewer for Android and Apple. Yeah, if you have a, any questions, it is the right time. Yes. Is there any way to use also CAD files? Or CAD files, I think, no. You still need to export it into FBX, OBJ and materials, or GLB or GLTF. Yes. Uh, I am kind of amazed by your performance. Thanks. And I am guessing it's also part of the private library, but rendering in real time through the camera, it's kind of... I, kind of don't get how it does run so well in JavaScript. Mm, you know, when you open this bundle file, you will have a lot of lines of code. So I will not like describe you yeah. all of this step by step, but it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can freely stand up if you cannot scan a QR code and come closer. And uh, if you have issues, ask me. You can have an issues with uh, augmented reality if your battery mode is in a safe power mode. Safe power mode removes all augmented reality from your mobile phone. Remember that <laughs> <laughs> and tell it to your, to your clients because otherwise they will be in panic calling you at night. Our product does not run. We have production tomorrow morning. I said, relax. <laughs> Just switch off your battery saving mode. 
Yeah. More questions? Yes. Um, so out of all the clients that you had at St. Elmo's, uh, which one are you most proud of or think uses AR the best? Um... Mm, I'm proud of our BMW client because they are asking us always for some in interesting stuff. Also, we are working with the Cross Camp and creating them a 3D uh, business cars with the cars on top of it, and you can change a color, switch on off lights, open the roof, and all of this fancy, beautiful stuff. Also, we are working a lot with uh, print mag magazines, and we are adding some video uh, layers uh, describing the product more, like on top. Mm. And yeah, and we are making a business card, so like you can come closer and take mine. If you scan a QR code, you will be redirected to a website and see a small hologram of me appearing on top. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do not have a lot of my cards, but I bring, brought cards from my project manager, so you will have a small pro project manager appearing on top of card, <laughs> which is also very cute. So this is, yeah, my favorite use cases, but we developed a lot of stuff. Yeah. More questions? Mm, yes, it is in Apple Store. Unfortunately, I don't remember the name. Try to Google it. Like, try on sneakers. I f know that uh, Valentino, Gucci are built in inside of their web of websites, oh, and the Balenciaga, I guess, as well. But I guess it's in, uh, in A-B testing, so probably someone of you will get it, someone not. More questions? Okay, then thank you for attention. I'm still here until the lunch time, so you can come and say hi. And yes, try a demos. Thank you.